Radio London. The home of London football. Saturday Sport. It is Saturday Sport. We're here for another hour. It's the Far Post on 94.9 FM on DAB Digital Radio at 5.30. We'll kick off in North London. Spurs against Manchester United. We'll get reaction from all our games this afternoon, including the commentary match where you've heard Brentford beat Fulham by three goals to nil. And at Loftus Road, QPR against Ipswich. Harry Simeon. It's finished QPR nil, Ipswich Town 1, but it was an encouraging performance from Queen's Park Rangers. I think it's important to state that they performed pretty well overall. They got caught napping for the Ipswich Town goal, which was scored by Connor Chaplin on 75 minutes. He had two bites at the cherry after Leif Davis picked him out from the left-hand side. He struck it low and hard to beat Azmir Begovic in the QPR goal and ultimately win this game. After that, Elias Chair almost caught the Ipswich Town goalkeeper Vaslav Nadaki out. He tried an audacious chip from just inside the Ipswich Town half and the goalkeeper had to backpedal and tip it over the top of his crossbar. Gareth Ainsworth's just been down on the pitch walking around uh, sort of urging the fans to applaud the QPR players and signalling to the fans to keep their chins up after what was, as I say, an encouraging performance, but of course a disappointing result. It's all over here, QPR nil, Ipswich Town 1. Let's go into League One then, shall we, where Charlton Athletic have been at home to Port Vale. Louis Mendes. Yeah, all over here. Charlton 2, Port Vale 3. Three league defeats in a row for the Addicts. All seems to be going well in the first half. They had the lead on nine minutes. Alfie May's first goal for the club from the penalty spot. But disastrous couple of minutes on 55. James Wilson heading home from Chislett's free kick. And then Michael Hector gifting the ball to the former Dons man, Chislett, to make it 2-1 to Port Vale. The Addicts back in it with Dan Khan, who's header on 72, looping over the goalkeeper. But another defensive nightmare, this time Nathan Asimway giving the ball to Josh Thomas. His shot will save Ojo, nicked in to score. Dobson head wide with the, the uh, last touch of the game when he could have equalised on his 100th appearance. But it's another defeat at the Valley for the Addicts. Finishes here, Charlton 2, Port Vale 3. Thank you very much indeed. That opening day winner over Leighton Orient uh, looks a long way away at the moment for Charlton. Talking of the O's, let's go to the filed coast. Blackpool against Orient. Dave Victor. First point, first clean sheet. It's finished here. Blackpool nil, late Orient nil. The O's rode their luck. It was Lavery in the second half with a shot that smashed the post against the post. And then in the fourth minute of stoppage time, Lavery's strike went across the face of goal. 638 supporters saw a fighting display from Richie Wellens men who also denied in the first half by an excellent save from um, Dan Grimshaw. It finished Blackpool nil, Lake Noyan nil. And here at Gander Green Lane, the Battle of the South has gone the way of the Wombles, Ahmed Noor. Indeed, Wimbledon have conquered South London. A 3 0 victory over Sutton United today, their first win over the years in the EFL. Great goals for each of them. Johnson scoring a fantastic header from a Tilly Cross just after the hour mark. Harry Pell came off the bench and scored his first touch from a Jake Reese corner with 10 minutes to go. And then James Tilly himself, having created one, scored one, drilling in on his left foot into the bottom corner. Three minutes from time. Wimbledon take score three, get three points. We'll dig into all those games, get reaction to them as well over the next 55 minutes or so on BBC Radio London before Gary Crowley takes the airwaves on 94.9 FM. Don't forget Spurs against Manchester United kicking off on uh, DAB Digital Radio uh, from 5.30. We've got the team news and the thoughts of Bradley Allen from there next. Call 0800 731 2000 or find us on social media. BBC Radio London Sport, the home of London football. Thanks so much indeed. Thanks to Paul Mortimer and Emma Jones. Uh, we'll be back with Mortz in a moment or two uh, as we reflect on that West London victory for Brentford, who um, in a very, very fledgling table go second behind Brighton and Hove Albion. Liverpool are third at this moment in time. We're going to get reaction from here at Gander Green Lane uh, and we will also be around our other grounds. Gary Crowley here at six, BBC introducing at eight with Jess as well. It's summer sunshine for some. It smiles for others. It feels as if there's rain in those w sort of fluffy white clouds in the sky above us. Let's go to North London though. Our final commentary game of the day will be Tottenham Hotspur's first home game officially. I know there's been pre-season friendly, but first home game officially for Ange Postacoglu against Manchester United. Nick Godwin, can you just remind us of the team news first and foremost? Yes, two changes for Spurs from that draw at Brentford. Emerson Royale 
and Oliver Skip have been demoted to the bench and that means that Pedro Porro is going to start at right back and Pape Sarr comes into midfield. Fraser Forster is also on the bench for the first time this season. That means uh, that Vicario's in goal, a back for a Porro, Romero, Van de Ven and Odoji with Bissouma and Saar, the anchor positions in that midfield. James Madison, in, if you like, the number 10 role. And then we assume Hyung min Sun and Dejan Kulisevsky to play wide in support of Richarlison. But again, I suppose, given Richarlison's lack of potency up front, it's conceivable that some would be preferred through the middle instead. But we won't know that uh, until they actually start playing. Uh, Manchester United, meanwhile, unchanged uh, from the side uh, that narrowly beat Wolverhampton Wanderers by a goal to nil uh, on Monday. And it looks as though they kind of operate with a sort of a 4-1-4-1 formation. Casemiro in front of the back four and then Mount Garnacho, Anthony and Fernandez supporting uh, Rashford uh, as the main striker. That's uh, my interpretation as opposed to uh, anybody else. It's very muggy here, it's very hot. Um, we've had a protest by the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust outside about uh, the rise in ticket prices uh, this season um, at Spurs. The Supporters Trust saying that in a cost of living, living crisis, these rises are too big and also unwarranted. So that's been going on on the high road. Meanwhile, inside, I think the big question is, Phil, just what are Ange Postacoglu's Tottenham made of when they yeah. come, up, come up against one of the stiffer challenges they'll face at home this season? Interesting. Bradley alongside you, um, Nick. Afternoon to you, Bradders. Good evening, Phil. Um, it is hot and sticky. It certainly has been here in South London. Um, though it's interesting, isn't it, really? The last time we spoke to you on BBC Radio London, it was on the eve of Harry actually deciding to leave. You said to us on that occasion, if you don't mind me reminding you, Harry's keen to, to go and win things. And that was probably not disrespectful to Spurs, but... Is it fair to say Spurs now with Ange in place are properly in a, in a proper transition? There's an understanding that this is a transitional appointment for someone who wants to take the style, uh, the way they approach and the club in a, in, a new, in a different direction. And that doesn't necessarily generate winning results immediately. Yeah, I think it would be fair to say that, Phil. You know, there's a, a rebuilding process to take place. I, I would expect there could possibly be some departures from the Spurs squad because of the numbers still yeah. uh, within that for Ange Postecoglou. But I think the start was quite positive in, uh, in parts in the 2-2 uh, draw in the London derby last weekend against Brentford. That was a fine game. You could see, you know, how Spurs are going to go about it under the new manager. Quite intense. Press the ball. Try and run it back high up the pitch. Of course, at times, that's going to leave them vulnerable to a release pass in behind the Tottenham Hotspur defence. Brentford themselves successfully had some good moments with that. Manchester United, I think, this evening here will be way better than what they were against Wolves. And let's be fair, you know, there was a hugely controversial refereeing decision late on in that game and really on balance of play, not to lose, Wolves should have won that game because uh, yeah. they were by far the better team and had the better players. Man United will be much, much better tonight. I expect goals and I think this is going to be an exciting affair tonight. Um, it's interesting what Nick said from a tactical point of view because obviously last week uh, I was at the game and Son did play very, very wide and stayed out wide for quite a long period of, of the game um, and it was Richarlison through the middle. Is that just with a, a new manager just trying to get some shape and system in place, do you think? Do you think they'll become a bit more adaptable? Yes, I think I think there'll be some rotation. You, you certainly see it with the full-backs, Phil, haven't you? Rolling inside, uh, either from right or left back, to, to, to make it sort of a, a fourth midfield player. And Spurs go into like a three-box three formation uh, where they try to overload centrally, I think, with Basuma as well, who looks fitter, sharper, playing with more confidence and opportunity. I think what the manager's done, and an excellent point that you've made, is that some of these players, and certainly those that started um, in that 11 last weekend, he's given them a chance. And he's sort of saying to them, you know, here you go, come on, let's take this opportunity, see how you can do, because I believe in you. So far, you've done quite well in pre-season. This is the project. This is how I want to go about it. And I think there's some optimism. There's some renewed confidence. And I think in front of uh, 
uh, a global watching public tonight. I think if Spurs can get three points here, that'll really uh, be a, a, a big shot in the arm, wouldn't it, Phil, as, uh, from a confidence point of view? Definitely. Um, for Man United, likewise, um, it's an interesting state. They, uh, uh, they weren't good against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, but how long can you say that Eric Ten Hag is in a transitionary period? Well, they, they, they will be expected to, to go well in all the cup competitions and uh, be a, a strong contender for a top four finish. Actually winning the league, you'd, you'd have to say at the moment that it's just two in Manchester City and Arsenal with the squads that they have that are going to be capable of doing that. I think Liverpool will be better. Chelsea, certainly it's going to be uh, an exciting watch. And Manchester United still do have a debt to their squad and we'll be expecting the fan base will be expecting them to, to have a good season and Ten Hag so and, and maybe actually they've got to win another cup as well Phil you know because of the uh, the history of the club so they'll go for this one they've got some pacey players and uh, and, and I think we, we could maybe be in for a, a high scoring affair yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, yourself and Nick on commentary. We're just waiting to get a chat here at Gander Green Lane with a, with a victorious manager. Someone else who's got a Spurs connection, uh, Johnny Jackson. Just a thought, actually, Bradley. I know you've been not watching it, but it was a tough first year for him last year. They are second as it stands after this 3-0 win. They could have won all of their games, actually, this season. Um, you know, he's got a smile on his face, and you can understand why. Yeah, it, it's brilliant because for any rookie manager and Johnny's not that now having had a go at, uh, at Charlton you always want them to sort of navigate some difficult spells Phil to come through sometimes actually losing your job and a sacking it's not ideal but it can really actually shape a young coach and managerial career and it looks as if at Wimbledon Johnny might be the right fit there and uh, you know they've made a promising start I think he's a believer in, in, in trying to get his side to uh, to sort of play some uh, expansive football, which is good. But obviously, at any level of football, you've got to get results. But, uh, you know, so far, the start's been good for, for uh, AFC Wimbledon. Back with you and Nick uh, shortly, Bradders, uh, for full commentary. That Tottenham Hotspur against Manchester United. Our second commentary game of the day, though, about to get off and underway on BBC Radio London on DAB, digital radio, through your televisions as well, um, and your commentary team uh, for Tottenham Hotspur. Taking on Manchester United, uh, Nick Godwin alongside Bradley Allen. Thank you very much indeed, Phil. Welcome once again to North London, where we have one of the feature presentations of any Premier League season. Tottenham Hotspur against Manchester United usually makes headlines. Manchester United's record here recently is very, very good, actually. They have an excellent record at this new stadium. But Spurs in a new era, a Postacoglu era and a post-Kane era. The game against Brentford last week was a real kind of sight of the Spurs. This is the first really big test. And the atmosphere on this lovely, warm, sultry summer evening in N17 is really bubbling. Let's bring you the two lineups. Spurs make two changes from Brentford. Guillermo Vicario in goal, a back four of Pedro Porro, Christian Romero, Mickey van der Ven, and Destiny Udoji. In midfield, Pape Sarr and Yves Bissouma sitting with James Madison ahead of them. Kyung Min Sun and Dejan Kosevsky with Richarlison up front. Manchester United unchanged from the victory against Wolves. Andre Anana, the new signing in goal. Back four of Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Lissandro Martinez, Rafael Varane and Luke Shaw. Casemiro sitting in front and then Anthony, Alejandro Garnacho, Bruno Fernandes and Mason Mount playing behind. Marcus Rashford is the main striker. On the bench of Spurs, Fraser Forster, Oliver Skip, Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, Davison Sanchez, Emerson Royale, Ivan Perisic, Giovanni Lo Celso, Manor Solomon and Ben Davies. And for Manchester United, Dean Henderson and Radek Vitek are the goalkeepers. Victor Lindelof, Anthony Martial, Christian Eriksen, Diego Dalot, Jaden Sanchez, Facando Palestri and Scott McTominay. Bradley Allen's alongside me. Feels like a big occasion this, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly does, Nick. Fantastic to be here. Wonderful welcome for the new Tottenham Hotspur manager and this newer group of players. The fans are in good voice. And I sense some optimism within the crowd.
well. I have to say, rarely has the South Stand sounded in better voice. This is BBC Radio London. And Tottenham Hotspur in all white. Against Manchester United in red shirts, black shorts and black socks. I think we're all ready and we are underway in North London with Tottenham attacking from right to left as we look at things. And there's an early touch of Vicario away to our right who gathers it very comfortably. This stadium is seething with noise. Let's see if the football can match the fantastic atmosphere that greeted the players and new manager and Postacoglu when they made their way out and in the last few moments here in a very sunny North London. Spurs playing out from the back, it's with Romero who had that bang on the head against Brentford, he's OK, here's Porro and then it's steered wide to Kulisevsky, right hand side, Tottenham on the attack, Richarlison in the penalty area, Kulisevsky floats this towards Sal on the volley, he's miscued and it's gone sideways and it's hacked away by Shaw towards the halfway line. First attack in anger from Tottenham Hotspur. Somehow, some miscued it. Bradley yeah, Allen. Lovely play out from the back and Spurs down the right-hand side. Far post cross. Son came in. It was the incorrect volley connection. But almost a, uh, an amazing start. Minute on the clock. Well, that really would have lifted the roof off the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium had that one gone in. Foul on halfway on James Madison it's taken quickly uh, by Destiny Udoji and he goes back to Van der Ven and now Vicario away to our right the sun's just gone in it's just cooled the stadium a fraction the whole of the far side was baking in sunshine when the players came out yeah, the temperature drops a fraction it's still warm and muggy in this part of town back with Vicario once again Rashford and Fernandez come to press that Spurs back four as they play out from the back. Here's Van der Ven. It does look as though Bissouma is just going to sit in front. Oh, there's a mistake um, by Porro, who's given it to Manchester United on that left-hand side and swept over the top by Anthony from the edge of the penalty area. Well, we've seen both sides of Spurs, they haven't we? Coming forward looking positive. And then Porro pressed into a mistake on the edge of his own box. Yeah, uh, a crossfield pass. Man United jumped and pressed the ball. And Garnaccio set Anthony, who was just inside the edge of the box. He tried to sweep his effort with his left foot, but he was just underneath the, uh, the attempt, and it went up and over the Spurs crossbar. Tottenham again trying to play out from the back. Here's Van der Ven just outside the penalty area. Bissouma is able to turn, it's faced by Fernandez inside his own half get it wide to Sun on the left and it is definitely Richarlison through the middle wan has gone through Sun there it's a free kick to Tottenham inside their own half and the Tottenham captain has stayed down just sitting up now and looking a bit yeah, just winded warm. a little bit the Spurs captain I think Spurs can take confidence from reviewing and preparing themselves for this game seeing Manchester United and the success Wolves had through the, the central part of the pitch certainly in midfield Kuna was outstanding on the night picking the ball up playing through spaces driving through gaps with the Basuma Madison can link and connect and offer that for Spurs that may well be part of the game plan here this evening Doji's unable to stop that going out of play. It's a throw in on this near side. Wambasaka, who made the move from Crystal Palace back in 2019. Croydon born. As Madison sweeps this wide. Kulisevsky is the target once again on that side. And Luke Shaw was a bit stronger than Kulisevsky there, just bumped him off the ball. And then it's turned forward by Mason Mount and wide that left hand side to Garnacho is going to run at the edge of the penalty area it's cutting in field shoots low and it's gathered easily by Vicario well it's not been cagey so far has it Bradley I've got to say no. with four minutes gone at nil nil and I would think as well both attacking both sets of attacking players that have been selected tonight will be going into this future uh, you know fixture thinking you know if we can get served with the ball with enough quality 
we can certainly create and uh, possibly get on the scoreboard. Here is a first touch, I think, so far for Pape Sar on the far side of the field. In for Skip. Sends it cannoning off Mount for a throw-in. Very peculiar seeing Mason Mount in the Manchester United shirt, yeah. Bradley. That is going to take some time to get used to, I'm fairly certain. It's a throw-in on the far side, which Porro's going to take, and Spurs have largely actually played these opening five minutes inside their own half of the field. They've not looked in real trouble, but not much of the game currently being played in the United half. That may change now as Van de Ven, the new signing as centre-half, collects and finds Destiny Udoji on the left. He's going to try and take on Anthony. Anthony's assiduous in keeping at him, and Udoji does cross the halfway line, but it goes out for a Manchester United throw in front of Eric Ten Hag's technical area. Naron Wambasaka is going to take it, and well, you, you mentioned Nick, didn't you? The Manchester United fullback, and I think he deserves a little bit of credit. He stuck at it. Bear with us a second. Oh no, I thought they were going to come to us for an update, Bradley. But you do carry on. Uh, well, hang on, we'll, we'll do that in a second because I think there's work to do here for Porro as he stabs his forward. Cleared away by Baran, collected. Uh, in a central position by Porro and he then loses possession and Romero has to come across to deal with Garnacho who makes progress down that side of the field for Manchester United it's a good block challenge by Romero uh, and it's collected on that touchline by Martinez and then there's a, a stoppage because Bruno Fernandes is down clutching his face so Bradley you were going to talk about Wan-Bissaka I think yeah I was just going to say you know he, he's had his critics in some quarters and inconsistency in these earlier games and performance for, for Manchester United at the start of his uh, career at Old Trafford but I think he's he sort of worked very very hard to grow through that he's a solid dependable 1v1 defender but as you say Fernandez getting some treatment there Porro in inside a doji infield we're going to see quite a bit of that I think from Spurs this season with these full backs I spoke about that before the start of the game and, and Spurs trying to overload central areas so the, the actual width then is is then going to then probably only come for the Spurs wingers in Kuliseski and Son this, this evening well there's no rapid return to an upright position for Bruno Fernandes he's sitting up now while he's being treated the challenge was from Porro and they both went for it, it as a 50-50 and I think Porro might have caught Fernandes on the foot yeah he's shaking his head as he walks away his shin pads come off and his sock is rolled down I don't know if that's a little bit of blood on his sock actually maybe he's Might got a, a gash yeah in which case they'll probably have to get some new socks bit in of a the... graze on that right shin he gets a a vuncular pat on the bottom just line. saying to the fourth official maybe the challenge was uh, a tad aggressive from Porro well they'll definitely add this on Bradley We'll be here all night. Yeah, that's. Uh, I can't wait for the, uh, the the officials board at half time and full time. Like it goes to Anana, another new arrival at Manchester United. Wambasaka, who you spoke about a bit earlier, did a brilliant job for Crystal Palace, and then has taken quite a bit of time to get make himself at home at Old Trafford. Now Manchester United have it with Anthony, switches the play to the left-hand side, Garnacho running at the edge of the penalty area, he's got Mount ahead of him, overlapping his Shaw, and that is well dealt with in the end by Pedro Porro, who had to get that challenge absolutely right inside the Spurs box, it goes out for a corner. Yeah, a misplaced pass from Van der Ven, Anthony pounced, and they switch the ball right to left-hand side, diagonally Manchester United very, very quickly, 2v1 on the outside, overlapping Shaw, he just managed to time his challenge there, Porro, didn't he? He sort of lunged in, but he got something on the ball. United corner, first of the game. Well dealt with by the Tottenham right-back. Now, some rubbish is being thrown onto the pitch on that uh, far side. I stress it is only bunched up bits of paper as this corner is swung out towards uh, the header over the top from Rafael Varane. Was there a helping hand from Vicario? Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was a looping header it probably was going to clear the crossbar and land on the uh, the top of the net above the goal but he took no chances Mason Mount's going to take this corner just tipped it helped it on its way follow up corner here Mount to take uh, oh, a paper aeroplane very nearly lands on his head it's all it's all good natured until it isn't really isn't it with that stuff coming on the pitch there's another paper aeroplane lands almost on halfway 
Mount with the outswinger, headed over the top by Varane once again, and that one didn't need a help from the goalkeeper, and it's going to be a goal kick to Tottenham. We've had nine and a half minutes on BBC Radio London, and it is Tottenham Hotspur nil, Manchester United nil, and Spurs are playing out from the back again. Ball down the channel, it goes straight to wan uh, Steered forward, uh, looking for Rashford, he's been put on his backside, clipped over the top for Spurs, Son tries to get on the end of it, uh, but Varane steers it back to Onana, who plays it well out to wan on the half one and Onana really did change the way the game was going there, as Rashford is offside, free kick to Spurs just inside their own half, but that's what they brought Onana for, that ability yeah. to... Brilliant. Play football. First time punch pass out. That's what you can do. Goalkeepers need to effectively be an outfield player with their feet now. Nick in the modern game. You're not a sweeper keeper, you're just a keeper, aren't you? Yeah, these they're days. pressing well United individually and collectively here. The Spurs are, are having just a little bit of difficulty, aren't they? Feeding the ball into those midfield areas. Don't United keep pinching the ball. I don't think I've said Madison yet, really. He's not had the ball inside Manchester United territory at all. This goes out for another throw-in on the near side. We've had ten minutes. wan who is very, very quiet, apparently, inside that Manchester United dressing room. And it's funny, isn't it? You know, you can, you can be as quiet as you like, but if you are a bit more outspoken, it does allow you to have more of a presence in the game. And by all accounts, once he got a bit more communicative in the dressing room he was able to uh, have more of a presence on the pitch as well here's Fernandez, who's got his shin pad back in and looks okay with his socks rolled up back to Andre Onana it goes once again inside his six yard box and he left footed lifts it forward it's allowed to bounce by Romero picked up by Van der Ven uh, inside his own half of the field making his home Premier League debut the 22 year old Dutchman cost 34 million pounds from Wolfsburg very tall but he's unable to get hold of that square pass by Romero out of play for a throw into Manchester United halfway inside the Spurs half of the field taken into the feet of Anthony now wan Bissaka once again Anthony being pursued by Basuma and Basuma's won it and he they try and feed Madison he has it taken away from him by Mount we are going to update the situation on 94.9 FM very shortly. Manchester United with more intricate players. They come forward. Anthony guides it forward. Rashford driving a goal. It's a good save by Vicario. Headed away from the line by Romero. And Manchester United slice through Spurs there. They'll have the chance to clear it now with Basuma. He's going to earn a foul against, Fernandez, against uh, Bruno Fernandes. But a first sight of goal for Manchester United's marksman Marcus Rashford. And Vicario advanced and blocked the shot. Yeah, clever combination. Marcus Rashford took it off of Anthony into the right side of the box. Romero put the arm on the England striker and it's a good right-handed save down to his right-hand side there as he made a barrier for Cario. That would give him a bit of confidence. Spurs still in this one, 0-0. Cario, another new arrival from Empoli, cost £17.2 million. This is his home debut as well. And that was a good moment for him. Flicked on by Richarlison for Spurs. Haven't mentioned his name a great deal so far on the ball either. And it goes out of play on this near side. Come on you Spurs is the yeah. call around Spurs the new White Hart Lane. Proud and rightly so, home faithful responded. They now want to see Spurs have some control and affect the, uh, the Manchester United half of the pitch. Madison had Anthony and wan on him there and he's conceded a throw in which Michael Oliver, our referee today, is allowing Manchester United to take. wan has a moment to pause. He hasn't got that many options. Uh, and a good bit of skill by Fernandes allows him to play it down the right. Here goes Rashford once again, and Garnacho's making his way into the box. If Rashford can find him, here is Marcus Rashford skipping into the box. wan on the overlap, cuts it back for a shot from Garnacho that flies up in the air. Uh, and it might drop to Fernandes, but Spurs have, more by luck than judgment, got this away. And now there's a counter-attacking chance. This is Dejan Kulisewski over the halfway line. Red Shirts have got back in numbers, though. There's not a huge number of options for him with so many Manchester United players suddenly back behind the ball. And Van der Ven has it on the halfway line. And every Manchester United player 
is now back behind the ball. But United are looking threatening when they come forward, Brad. Yeah, very much so. Showed good discipline there, didn't they, on the recovery run. And there United go again. Here we go. 15 minutes gone here. It's Tottenham nil, Manchester United nil. But Manchester United have had the better attacking moment so far. Vicario has been called into a... A stop from Rashford, but here comes Kulisewski for Spurs into the penalty area. Tries to go on the outside of his man, and it's bundled behind for Spurs' first corner. They've not created much Tottenham in these opening exchanges in the final third of the field. Richarlison and Madison starved the possession. Manchester United have looked pretty good going forward, and Rashford's drawn the first save from Vicario. It was a good right hand from the Spurs' home debutante to turn away the England striker's effort. We've had 15 minutes. It is Tottenham nil, Manchester United nil. Madison's going to take this corner for Spurs. They're first down the right-hand side. And they have got big units to send forward, haven't they? Romero's in the box. Uh, Udoji's in there as well. Van de Ven is very tall. Those are the options. This comes in looking for... Well, <laughs> um, two of them went for it at the same time. Saar and I think Van de Ven both went for the header. And between them, they've headed it over the top. Uh, and it's nil-nil. But at the moment, Bradley, we're seeing Manchester United do most of the attack and Spurs on the counter-attack. Yeah, Spurs moments, but uh, only really counter-attack. Spurs haven't really, perhaps, regained the ball to have enough possession yet. And United, 16 oh, minutes in, are having slightly uh, more of it. I thought they'd given it away to Richarlison, Manchester United, but they hadn't. Here's Mount with a long angle ball forward, looking for Rashford, cut out by Romero. Here's Bissouma and Saar and Porro and Tottenham looking comfortable in possession inside their own half, but it is all still inside their own half when Spurs have possession. Madison gets it wide, Porro's going to release Kulisevsky down the right once again, this could be trouble for Manchester United. Kulisevsky skips into the box and earns another corner off the heels uh, of the defender coming back on well, it. So he's escaped and got away down that right-hand side quite well with some double movement, clever from Kulisewski, perhaps just the final ball Nick at the moment bit of a reluctance to maybe use his, his weaker right foot to deliver around the back of the United defence but Ma Madison who assisted with that free kick at Brentford last week for Spurs, his first goal in the Premier League this season is going to take a second corner here on that right hand side. Here is the outswinger, it uh, looks for a doji but it's headed away uh, as far as Sun on this near side he's going to recycle it Porro just on the edge of the centre circle Spurs starting to draw men back including Van der Ven who's now taking up a position on the halfway line Bissouma and Porro and Van der Ven combine inside the centre circle Manchester United with everyone behind the ball uh, once again Garnacho trying to put pressure on Romero here he's got it out wide to Kulisevsky who's looked the most lively of the attacking players for Spurs so far but there's no way through for him this time he goes back to halfway and Romero a whole host of white shirts in front of him, but a whole host of red shirts as well. Porro tries to make a dash down the right, doesn't receive the ball. And they found Van der Ven in a little bit of space on the halfway line. Nil-nil between Spurs and Manchester United here on BBC Radio London with Nick Godwin and Bradley Allen in the commentary box. Here's Bissouma, turns away from traffic and charges forward. Has he been caught there uh, by Fernandes? He has, and this is a free kick for Spurs down the left, about 10 yards in from the touchline and 30 yards from goal. Yeah, positive turn and drive, I think we've seen that in the early days of this Premier League season from Bazuma. certainly playing confident, if he can bring that to Spurs midfield and then feed the attacking players in front of him, I think that'll really uh, help Spurs in the final third in key games, Madison to take this free kick good position yeah, a right-footed delivery. This will swing in, or oh, it almost drops onto the head of Van der Ven, but it's headed away. Madison gets to the loose ball first and finds Kuhn Sun on the left-hand side. Oh, and then he tries to play Madison in, and Madison goes down under a challenge from Garnacho. And Madison's point is, he would have got to that pass had Garnacho not held him up. It was it was miles off the ball as the problem, and Michael Oliver's not interested. It's a goal kick. Uh, to the uh, the visitors, the Red Devils, away to our left. And they play it short, as is uh, the style, with Anana in goal, and it goes out to wan who sends it down the channel. Anthony the target, well watched by Udoji, who gets the challenge in on halfway. 
And Postacoglu with a few words of advice down there for his new left back. Is Wan Bissaka being pressed into a bit of trouble by Sun? And then is this going to drop to Madison? No, Manchester United just managed to keep that away from the, uh, the white shirts inside Manchester United's half of the field. Spurs have won it back. Yeah, they're though. growing into this one there, can't they? Nearly 20 minutes on the clock. They're just starting to sort of gain some confidence where, you know, the uh, the first player closest to the ball is just getting a, a fraction tighter to the uh, Manchester United opponent, but the support's good. But turnover here. Oh, Doji's managed yeah. to win it back, but he's fouled. I think Anthony, he lost his foot in a little bit, didn't he? And he turned straight into Anthony and Casemiro pounced as well. Yeah, Casemiro standing over this free kick, but I think he'll leave it for... Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United player, makes his way further forward. Well, they played this short and quick to Rashford, who drives in a shot from a tight angle that's blocked by Van der Ven. Manchester United have earned their third corner of the game down their right. Clever movement, wasn't it? Really sharp. From Marcus Rashford, fed by Fernandes, quickly taken free kick. Another corner for the visitors. Another bit of rubbish is chucked to Fernandez. He catches it and tosses it aside. Right footed out swinger. Varane to make a late run. Oh, he moves towards the near post now and this is headed away at the near post by Adoji. Collected by Anthony. He can't get hold of it and then this is clipped clear looking for Kulisevsky. Anana is on the halfway line. So far out of his goal. And he's played a delightful ball down the left. He's gone at you offside. But he's touched it. Game continues. Low cross coming in. Cleared by Van der Ven. Still the assistant referee doesn't raise his flag on the near side. So we can only assume that Garnacho was onside. It's a fabulous pass by the goalkeeper again, Bradley. Yeah, wonderful distribution. Oh, he's on. Yeah, maybe Romero just, just dropped a bit early then. Big diagonal, wasn't it? Lovely ball striking technique from Anana to set Garnacho away. Just couldn't pick out a United attacker in the penalty box there on the cross you know these centre halves these ball playing centre halves you get Bradley you won't need one of them anymore if your goalkeeper can do that don't, don't need any passing from your number sixes just, uh, just put your laces through or give it to the goalie Van der Ven has it on the edge of his penalty area clips it to the near side Adoji is faced by Casemiro there's a proper battle between those two goes out of play for a Spurs throw. Yeah, he failed off his opponent well there, didn't he? Just tried to wriggle out. He was quite tight to the near touchline in his left back position. Adogi. Richarlison comes deep, dispossessed. Madison in the thick of it, manages to take it away. And now Richarlison can move over the halfway line, or can he? Mount and Wambisaka between them have taken it away. And then Fernandez has spread the play to the left hand side. He's gone. Nacho, players herring forward with Shaw on the overlap comes back to Fernandez, who clips in across Rashford's free and that's over the top I wonder if there was a flag up anyway against him he's oh, it's a sitter, furious isn't it? with himself outstanding Rabona cross when it come back to Fernandez, flipped him behind the uh, the Spurs defence definitely onside in the build up to that United attack Yeah, and the uh, yeah, Ratsford maybe half a yard offside there. It wouldn't have counted had it hit the target, but it was uh, wasteful from the Manchester United striker. Back it goes to Anana once again. 23 minutes gone, still nil-nil. Only really that Rashford chance saved by Vicario. As far as chances are concerned, but it does feel like Spurs are evolving, Bradley, doesn't it? It does feel like they're making that they're still working out how this is going to happen. Yeah. And that's where I think patience is going to be crucial, really important with this Tottenham side across this season. Here's Rashford just inside his own half. Swung wide by Mount to Garnacho on the left. Mount ch charging forward, Anthony as well. Shaw on the overlap. This is Shaw in a crossing position. Low cross deflected. Fernandez will get there first. It cannons off Michael Oliver. And it's cleared by Madison, but it won't release Kulisevsky this time. Doing a lot of the ball, Nick, aren't they, Manchester United? I think the Manchester United fans feel rather expectant at the moment. Here's Anthony on the edge of the Spurs box, back to Wan-Bissaka. Steered forward by Casemiro, but 
straight to Basuma. And now what can Spurs do with this? Sun's tearing down the left. He wants to run at Varane. And Sun might be able to skip away from him here. The two of them are battling for it on the edge of the Manchester United box. And Sun's cut in field. First time we've seen a moment from him. This is Saar. Gives it to Kulisevsky wide on the right. Onto his left foot. Drives it in tamely. And Anana gathers. And Richarlison's furious. Standing at the feet of Anana. He wandered across. Still 0-0. Yeah, rather tame finish in the end. Definitely Spurs' his best attack. Brilliant release pass from Basuma. Speed, intensity with Son. Getting away from Varane. Unselfish by Saar. And maybe Kulaseski could have hit his shot with a bit more venom in uh, quite a favourable position on his left foot. Nil-nil. That's Spurs' best moment of the game. Tottenham starting to play with a little bit more swagger. Here is Bissouma, centre of the field, just holding off Bruno Fernandes. Back to Porro and Romero inside the centre circle. Richarlison with his back to goal. Turns and feeds. I thought Saar was going to shoot, actually, Bradley. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not really his natural position inside the penalty area, is it? Um, but he laid it off to Kulisevsky, his son, who had his first proper moment on that flank a little bit earlier good from wan again brilliant from wan to take it away from Sun then there's a little trick by Rashford to pop it through the legs of van der Ven and he's away through the middle of the field and he's played in Garnacho, who's got lots of space Poro to close him down Garnacho, that's deflected and it goes behind uh, it's a corner they're claiming it was a hand and uh, Michael Oliver says it's not it's a corner it will get looked at Garnacho's convinced Let's have, a, well, let's have a look at it now. Ooh, that has hit Romero on the arm. Is the arm close? I'm not sure. Is it outstretched? Is it in an unorthodox position? The ball is going on target, isn't it? Just having a look. I suspect he'll come over and... Can I see a VAR graphic? Probably check this. There's more television screens here than on your average streets. And VAR are having a look at a this. A VAR decision going in favour of Manchester United, Nick? I, for one, would be shocked. Uh, but it has struck Romero on the arm. That is his arm in a natural position. Romero's moving towards the ball as Garnacho cuts in field. Well, we can't see it from that angle, but there'll be a couple more. It did look as though it was close. This is going to be an interpretation, Bradley. He's given a corner without, che without checking the monitor. We'll just update the situation. It is nil-nil. Manchester United have just had a penalty shout, a effort block. Now, they keep throwing rubbish at the uh, Manchester United corner takers, the South Stand, and it is mainly screwed up bits of paper at the moment, but loads and loads and loads of them are coming on whenever there's a corner, which is a little bit unsettling. This corner's about to be taken, but Garnacho drove a shot on the edge of the penalty area, and Romero, in his attempts to close it down, did, it did strike his arm as it bounced away. Spurs have had their best chance through Kulisevsky. Uh, that Vicario save from Rashford, the closest Manchester United have gone. It is a corner, not a penalty, and it's nil nil with nearly half an hour play. Here's the corner, swung in, and uh, Casemiro goes for it. It's headed away by uh, Romero, drops to Mount who heads it back into the mix Romero with another towering header Garnacho heading away from goal and can Udoji make a challenge there he can and he's stopped Manchester United in their tracks there they thought they were piling on pressure it's a th Spurs throw on the right hand side yeah defended the penalty box from the set play pretty well there Spurs there was a first contact second ball eventually it went out Udoji went in on the challenge I think it was Mason Mount and that lifted this Tottenham crowd as well. Might be out of break here down the uh, the right again with Kulisewski. Well, the Charleston's done quite well to skip away uh, from the attentions of Martinez. And he's going to clip across into the box. Oh, Saar falls over. Doesn't find uh, Kulisewski taking up a position inside the penalty area. Now Bissouma tries to go round his man. Referee's going to get a foul against Bissouma there. Fernandez gets to his feet and marches away. Free kick Manchester United inside their own half of the field. I have to say, Manchester United players didn't look entirely agreed that that wasn't given as a penalty, did they? Maybe they thought it was just natural movement, maybe. Well, I, th I don't want to hark back to the decision on Monday evening at Old Trafford, but that was... Do you mean the assault? Once in a lifetime mess up, wasn't it, by that official? Not naming names. Well, there, Dear were, me. There, were, there were several of them, weren't there? Yeah. There was a referee involved, there, were, there was a VAR official involved.
play on. Maybe at 10 to 10, the uh, the gentleman at Stockley Park just went for a cup of tea and a nice biscuit. Maybe he'd, uh, he missed it. Maybe he'd had a long day. Here's Casemiro for Rashford, edge of the Spurs box, just can't find his way through. Madison's pinched it. And Madison glides away from two Manchester United players and starts an attack for Tottenham. This is a doji, left-hand side. Sun to his left. He's got Richarlison making his way into the penalty. Oh, lovely reverse ball. Here's a chance of Saar. Good save. Comes out of Saar again. He can't get his feet right. Goodness gracious me, Pape Saar popped up again inside the penalty area. And Anana just stuck out his left hand and parried the shot. Tottenham's best chance to score. Nil-nil. Well... I think what we're starting to see is although United are having a good spell in this game, Tottenham are creating slightly better chances, certainly through the counter-attack. When they do break through that, that midfield pressure, there is space for Tottenham to exploit and they're getting into more dangerous positions. Well, I'm here to tell you that Pape Sarr has never scored for Spurs, but <laughs> there's a little bit of me that says today might be the day, given some of the positions he's taken up so far. Anana clears, Doji watches it over his head and out of play for a throw-in. I think we're right to compliment Anana, but Nick, I'd like to play against him. Would you? That's very interesting. Do you know why? Because he gives you a chance if you get the press keeps right. You, it keeps you interested. <laughs> if, if you just get close enough, he'll try and do something a little bit cheeky, a little bit clever, maybe a drag back or a touch too many. Pounce, and you'll win it. Well, Bradley, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably told me this. If I'm repeating your words of wisdom back to you, you only need to be lucky once, don't you, really? Yeah, that's it. You keep asking the question. And it'll, it'll happen. Work. It'll, it'll happen. You know, he's a, he's a confident chap. He believes in his ability, but I think he'll make an error or two this season playing like that. Spurs have it at the back. And again, it just felt a little bit earlier that Manchester United were really cranking it up. Maybe Spurs have weathered the storm. Here's Vicario at the back for Tottenham. Nice angled ball for Son, who flicks it on. Can't find another white shirt, though. It'll be blasted forward by Lissandro Martinez. Collected by Anthony, rolls it forward. Here's Rashford, right edge of the penalty. Here. Cuts it back for Fernandez, whose shot is blocked by Adoji. Comes out to the right, and Anthony once again. He's going to try and curl this in from a very, very tight angle. And it sails into the south stand. Still nil-nil. We've got 14 minutes to... Well... The 14 minutes to go until we find out there are still 10 minutes to go. I think what's going to be uh, a great watch for us this season where Spurs play quite a high line and, you know, they, they leave space for opposing attacking players in 1v1 situations. What we mustn't forget, Nick, is there's some really talented attacking players across the Premier League. Yes. And some of them are 1v1 specialists, aren't they? But but that like that room to manoeuvre the ball, to be positive, to drive, to take on their opponent. Yellow card here is being shown to the Tottenham captain, I think, for a tangle with wan -Bissaka. United fullback, was it? I think he caught Or, or is it wan who's yeah, been caught? Sorry, I was bit. looking down and the, 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 Michael Oliver wasn't in Maybe just up. frustrated. It is, is wan who has been booked. Gives Son the ball. Well, yeah, we've seen a good tussle between these two already. Doji's lost it. He's going to win it back, though, on the halfway line for Spurs. James Madison, who is, I think, growing into the game a bit. It's angled ball for Sun. He can't control the layoff, though. But well, they want it back, Spurs, and then they can't quite get hold of it. Or can they? Well, it's all a little bit desperate at the moment for Varane as he takes on two Spurs players to control him. He's got away with it. And wan has fed the ball infield for Casemiro and Manchester United are building from the back. 12 minutes to go in the opening 45. Here's Varane once again. And through Mason Mount inside the centre circle. He's getting a fair bit of grief as an ex-Chelsea player whenever he gets the ball for the visitors. Here he is again. Goes back uh, to uh, Lissandro Martinez once more, just inside his own half of the field. Richarlison comes to close him down. Madison, in turn, puts pressure on Varane. It comes out to wan who's on that yellow card. Steered forward for Fernandez. Here's Anthony. Bruno Fernandez's ball is lifted forward, but it kind of into no man's land, really. Nowhere near Garnacho or Rashford. And it's easily marshaled by the Spurs' back line. 
back to Vicario, who plays it out short to Van der Ven and Romero. Back to Vicario once again. Spurs, in the same way as Manchester United, building patiently from the back. Madison's dropped deep, wearing that number 10 shirt. Van der Ven collects it inside his own half of the field. He's going to make his way into United territory. Sun helps it on. Here's Adoji who's got forward. Offside. Oh, he's offside as he uh, tried to bring Madison into the game. Flag went up. Free kick Manchester United inside their own half of the field. Well, it's a lovely evening in North London. I wonder whether the weather might turn, but it's glorious, really, and uh, not quite as hot as it was, so... Everyone here is having a lovely evening out. What, what have you made of the opening 34 minutes, though, Bradley, from a Tottenham perspective? Yeah, although neither side are on the score sheet just yet. I think that is likely to come in the second half because I think we've seen enough from both these uh, teams tonight that would suggest we're going to get goals. Anthony on the right-hand side wants to take on Van der Ven, who's stuck with him. There's no way through for the... Manchester United player, wan gives it back to Anthony on the flank. Casemiro's joined in on that right side. Anthony moves in field. He's going to clip this from right to left, the other edge of the penalty area. And Garnacho, his short, first time cross and an awful header by Bruno Fernandes, who may have been onside, the flag stayed down, unmarked six yards out. And it's, it's a big call from me, Bradley, because I've never scored a Premier League goal, but surely it's easier to hit the target from that sort of range. Well, we're only two weekends into the Premier League season. That might be miss of the season. He just drifted, ghosted in, didn't he? Beyond the Spurs defenders, a late run. Whether he felt that he's going to be challenged, he's going to be under duress or contact, but it's a really poor header off target. Big, big chance miss there. He had by a Manchester United. He had a rather desperate look at the assistant referee as if to say, please put your flag <laughs> Yeah, out. help me out on help that one. Out. Get, do, do me a favour. Well, that really should have been 1-0 to Manchester United. He was onside. Kulisevsky racing in field. He's been dragged down, hasn't he, there? Well, the referee says play, and in fact he's given the advantage to Tottenham. His son down the left, whips in across. It eludes Richarlison, who goes down under a challenge. There isn't anyone at the far post, and then Porro concedes a free kick he's caught uh, Garnacho on that side and it's a free kick to Manchester United and Richarlison is only just getting up yeah it's a pity okay. that because he did well good strength Kulaseski rolled inside off that left foot he was challenged by Shaw good advantage by the referee Madison's pass found Son and he opted to cross early he might possibly have took a fraction longer there was a little bump in the middle but that's just Wise defending, wasn't it, from Martinez? Argentinian up against the Brazilian. You'd expect that. <laughs> Don't forget we've got live coverage on BBC Radio London tomorrow morning of England against Spain in the Women's World Cup final. Then in the afternoon on digital, it's West Ham against Chelsea. And then on Monday evening from 6, we're live at Sellers Park for Crystal Palace. Well played for Zuma. Zuma's done well to spin away from trouble on the edge of his own penalty area. And he moves the ball forward and he's fouled by Anthony and that's a yellow card. Michael Oliver did not hesitate to book the Manchester United player for that. Free kick Spurs. Yeah. I just think, Nick, if Spurs can stay in the game, as Fernandez now, that's the new directive. Credit to the referee. And now Fernandez has said something else. And the referee's called him over for a second chat, having shown him the yellow card. And I think he's saying to Bruno Fernandez, with these new regulations, you are now treading a very, very thin line. You say one more thing to... It's like dealing with a, a, a child, actually. You say one more thing to me, now you have to make a choice. Yeah. You, better, be you better not moan now. Exactly. To some of these refs, catch them on the wrong day. Well, they have new powers. And to, well, to be fair to Bruno Fernandes, he's still giving Michael Oliver a piece of his mind. I think he's realised that he's on his last chance. 
And you see Bruno Fernandes very, very fortunate there because once Michael Oliver shows him the yellow card, Fernandes jabs his finger in the air very close to Michael Oliver's face. And as you say, on the wrong day, well, I don't know, on the right day, you're going to find yourself in even bigger trouble. Here's a doji inside the United penalty area, brings it down, Sun takes over, running square, offloads, and a drive that hits the woodwork from Pedro Porro. That has the crossbar shaking. Here's Saar down the right, low cross coming in. Oh, it's in the post again! Everyone's been and Martinez oh, scrambles dear. it clear. Just a woodwork. The luck of Manchester United, extraordinary. Great effort from Porro, banana beaten. Saar persevered, it hit the near post in the follow-up attack. Nearly a first goal of the game there for Tottenham Hotspur. Well, Manchester United should have been in front. And now Spurs have hit the post twice within a few seconds. Madison turns his forward, Porro driving into the box. And he's tried to prod that at Anana. And well, he's he could have took wide. longer, he had time, he had the runner, Martinez then. And he tried to flick it with the outside of his left foot. Here's the shot from the edge of the box. Porros outside the right foot. Anana beaten. Just the uh, the thickness of the crossbar. Then Sart cut back off of Shaw. Inadvertently di diverted it. Would have been an own goal. Anana beaten once again, but the uh, right post to United's rescue. Nil nil. Five minutes to go to half time. Manchester United have had two real efforts. Fernandez header wide inexplicably, and Rashford's effort saved by Vicario. And Spurs hit bar and post within a couple of seconds of each other. That is a foul, surely, by, by Anthony. The game continues, lifted into the Spurs box. Good header back by Romero, by Porro, beg your pardon, into the arms of Vicario. Well, since Pedro Porro gave the ball away early on for Spurs, he's grown into the contest, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. I think he's uh, added some key attacking moments and assists and he put, got himself edge of the box there in a really dangerous position and struck the ball pretty well. Cario combines with Romero inside the Spurs half of the field and Tottenham will move forward. It's with Van der Ven now, the other uh, centre-half. And while Manchester United made a lot of the early running, Tottenham are growing into this and Madison is on the ball once again threads a pass it'll be collected by Saar who makes his way towards the edge of the penalty area holds off two challenges gives it to Adoji edge of the United box wide to Sun on the left it's closed down by Wan-Bissaka in field now for Saar once again Basuma alongside him he leaves it for the former Brighton player now Sun again on the left Adoji moves forward to the touchline and gives it back to Sun, Spurs being patient, into Richarlison, back to goal, it's going to drop to Sun, is it? No, wan -Bissaka. almost, by pure luck, finds the ball at his feet and he clears. You'd probably say, Nick, Tottenham Hotspur are finishing the half stronger. Their best spell of the game. Yeah, and the Spurs fans sense that. The Doji down the left, has the throw, 10 yards from the corner flag. Michael Oliver says, get on with it. Headed away by wan -Bissaka. Some stretching. Van der Ven has to be careful here because he's got Rashford behind him. Guided back to Romero on the halfway line. Porro again in a central position. Goes wide to Papi Saar. Kulisevsky outside him. Saar marauds infield into Richarlison. He's back to goal. Lissandro close to him. Lissandro Martinez. Here's Kulisevsky. Drives it in down the throat of Anana. It's the second time he's tried his luck from that sort of position. And Anana's been equal to it both times, nil-nil. Yeah, the, the, the drop of the right shoulder and coming in off that line again was clever from Kulisewski. But enough, not enough power. Quite Porro shot to beat the keeper. A reminder that Ad Postacoglu was unbeaten in all 38 of his home league matches as Celtic manager. So losing at home oh, is not something... Oh, great press from Saar. Yeah, he's... he's, he's, he's becoming more and more influential he's gone down that's a foul and a free kick to Spurs probably don't want the half to finish actually Tottenham here they're just getting a, a bit ragged and a little bit sloppy aren't they one or two of the Manchester United players yeah that and was, rather treatly uh, turning the ball over that was Mount who was penalised Madison's free kick cleared away by Martinez 
Oh, and then Toro's reacted first to it from the touchline. Sends in the cross. Romero can't control the header. It loops up in the air and Anana gathers it ahead of oh, it's a Richarlison. Chance. Maybe the World Cup winner jumped a little bit early there. Porro did well, pressing. He was stretched at that uh, right byline and he hooked across in. And Romero was free. He was on the score sheet against Brentford last weekend as Banana sweeps this, for sweeps this forward. Uh, Van der Ven clears. There's no flag up against Rashford, even though he was very advanced. Game continues. Anthony uh, into Casemiro. He can't control it. And it goes through to Vicario, who races to the edge of his penalty area, wants to distribute quickly and then waits. Just says, hold on for a second and there'll be a I bit think, of a reset. I think we'll have a few minutes, Nick, won't we? There's a I'm couple sure. of decisions for the uh, the referee to consider. Yeah, Probably the uh, the big one was maybe that handball. Lifted Romero. forward and Fernandez is the target for this from Manchester United through to Vicario again. The fourth official has indicated there will be a minimum of three minutes oh. at the time. Three minutes? Do you feel you've had your money's worth, Bradley? Just yeah. three minutes? Decent game. It has been a good watch. Good hasn't watch, it? yeah. And uh, we're learning a great deal about these two sides and the way this has been conducted. Here's Adoji and uh, Basuma on this left side. Madison gets it back to East Basuma. And Basuma and Saar, as you've identified, Bradley, are having an increasing say. Oh. <laughs> near my big mouth uh, he's just dumped that out of play ahead of Porro and I've got a, a withering look from my erstwhile co-commentator to my right yeah just keep your big mouth shut Nicholas I, I, I think as well though that that Spurs can take confidence from the last 10-15 minutes of this first half and I think the uh, the manager will give them a, a lot of positive words and encouragement at half time and you, but you just feel for them to create a brilliant chance Nick one like they did for Porro they've got to get Madison on the ball just in little half turn position pockets of space perhaps off the back of Casemiro who I thought struggled quite a bit on Monday evening I think Jane Madison couldn't really be the key attacking that south stand Odoji is going to get this back from Richarlison sweeps it forward can Kulisevsky get there before Sean no Luke Shaw guides it away from danger. We're playing the second minute of the three. That Michael Oliver has announced he'll be adding on at the end of this first half. It's nil-nil here on BBC Radio London. And Manchester United are on the attack. It's with Casemiro. Shaw joins in down the left once again. Given to Garnacho, who skips in field. Two waiting for the cross. He's switched it to the right. Here's Fernandez. He's going to dig this into the box. And the touch comes off Garnacho. And goes out of play for a goal kick. Uh, which Guillermo Vicario making his home debut in the Premier League for Tottenham Hotspur is going to take away to our right and we're in the third minute of stoppage time. Eric Tanhag never looks terribly pleased with anything, does he really? He's always rather sort of... No, not constrict. too high or low, is he? No, very sort of, yeah, very flat, you're right. Even in the, uh, the bigger games. There we go. Kulisevsky in for Madison through the middle of the field. Spurs off and running. Here's Richarlison challenged by... Lissandro Martinez throwing goes Tottenham's way Martinez is convinced yeah. it should have been his the Man United number six the left central defender he's rather furious slid in well timed his challenge brilliantly there on Richarlison it's the first time we've seen Madison in that advanced area as you say Spurs take the throw in short this is with East Bissouma central position Saar outside him to the right Porro high up to the right of him Saar looks up gives it to Pedro Porro and the referee says that's half time and as you can hear from the ripple of relatively contented applause Bruno Fernandes is still talking about something or other despite being on a yellow card and his last warning Manchester United captain just cannot help himself at the moment uh, but it's nil-nil both these sides have had chance in the first half Spurs hit the woodwork twice in the space of a few seconds from Pedro Porro's drive and then Saar's shot what have, you, what have you spotted, Bradley? You were just drawing my attention to something. Is it one of the National League coaching staff coming on uh, to have a, um, a word? Or is it Steve? It's not Steve. Is that Steve McLaren? It is, isn't it? What's he, what's he got to say to um, penalty. Michael Oliver? They wanted a penalty. Get yourself back in your, uh, your hut, Steve. Didn't think you were allowed to do that, Nick. I didn't know. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, 
given what I saw at Wickham, surprised there haven't been a few more cards shown to the coaching staff. <laughs> dear, oh dear, we almost... I had to give the post-match interview almost for late Noring, given the number of coaches that were sent off in that one. Um, so, yeah, Sars Cross uh, then hit Shaw and he hit the post in that best moment for Tottenham, really. Um, match United's best chance is that Rashford say, effort saved by Beccario. Uh, and then that remarkable free header from Bruno Fernandes unmarked inside the six-yard area. He put it miles wide. <laughs> Absolutely extraordinary. Half-time, Tottenham nil. Manchester United nil. BBC Radio London. The home of London football. football. There was that penalty shout as well, Bradley. We should say that. And, uh, you know, Romero's arm was a little bit away from his body, but not away from his body enough for the uh, VAR official to say to Michael Oliver, you've got to go and have a look at that because he didn't check it. It was just decided it would be a, a corner. So that was probably the most quote unquote controversial moment of the game. Yeah, good fun. A good watch, Nick. And probably on balance of play, both sides could easily have scored a goal or two. Manchester United will feel harshly done, in my opinion, that they didn't get that penalty award. And Fernandez should, should have certainly scored with his headed opportunity. Spurs had a couple of really good efforts in the last five, ten minutes of that first period. Second half goals, methinks. Would you, would you, I'm going to probably ask you this quite a lot, Bradley, so forgive me. Would you put some through the middle? Well, maybe because he just might be able to, to make a run in between or off the back of the shoulder of Varane and uh, Martinez, who, who sometimes get a bit square on. But I think the, the actual pass before that needs to be fed perhaps to Madison just a fraction quicker I think if Spurs can contemplate that at the half time interval find that in key moments in the second half then chances will most definitely come their way that may determine the outcome of this game and, and I think Spurs have the potential here and the capabilities Nick to, to score goals against his Manchester United side having said that Manchester United with the space that they've had and the 1v1 moments and chances themselves will uh, fill and take confidence into the second that they can certainly score and win this one. It's finally poised. It is. It's fascinating. Thank you, Bradley. Half-time, Tottenham nil, uh, Manchester United nil. If you remember, this time last year, Manchester United's first away game, they lost 4-0 at Brentford. Uh, things are a little closer at half-time in this game uh, and we'll have full commentary on the second half here on BBC Radio London Sport on Digital uh, very shortly. But we will uh, bring in Zabby Bird at this point to round up what has been a very busy day of games uh, away from this one in the three o'clock kickoffs. Zabby, good evening to you. Good evening, Nick. Yeah, thanks very much. No goals in this one yet. Well, we had three in our commentary game earlier on Radio London. All of them went to Brentford. They beat Fulham 3 0 at Craven Cottage earlier on. Now, the players are just coming back out at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So let's hand you back to your commentary team. Bradley Allen is with Nick Godwin. Thank you, Zabby. Zabby, do you think it was a penalty? Uh, I didn't catch it, do you know? Oh, but you were working very hard. I was we, we spent to lots of other things, yeah. We, we, we've, been, we've been trying to work out why you didn't go and have a look at it, but uh, if, if you, you were very busy. But thank you for your, uh, your half-time <laughs> roundup. <laughs> for my insight, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, these matters will be discussed on Monday with Aaron Paul, I'm sure, from... Six o'clock, we're going to be live at Sellers Park uh, for that one, ahead of Crystal Palace against Arsenal. Here, though, we've got the second half of Tottenham against Manchester United uh, to come. Uh, and I think match of the day this evening is going to dwell extensively, I would suggest to you, on uh, the moment when it struck um, Romero's arm. And in, in those environments, you would have thought that Michael Oliver would be invited to decide whether or not the ball... I, I did Spall see it. Struck Nick, Romero. I did see it. You did see I it. I did see it. I've, for, I've forgotten which one you were talking about. I did see it. I don't think that's a penalty, especially if Manchester United didn't get a penalty. Uh, if Wolves didn't get a penalty on aha, Monday. Aha! Now you have that right. Well, th 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 that Bradley Allen's essay question for the second <laughs> half. You have just given us a lot of material for it. So thank you very much indeed. Bradley, should it matter? Thank you, thank you, Zavi. We're about to get the second half underway. Should it matter that Manchester United got an iffy VAR decision? Zavi can look in, into the future. He, he, he stole he, our thunder. He did, he did. We were all, <laughs> we were, we were going to spend ages wading through 
whether or not the iffy decision uh, on Monday night means that Manchester United don't get a VAR decision. Was on. it in the thoughts of Mr Oliver, I wonder? I wonder. Well, uh, I imagine he had Steve McLaren in his, yeah. in his ear quite a lot of that half-time because he was the last person to chat to him on the pitch. Chat or harangue. But Monday evening at Old Trafford has come and gone, Nick, hasn't it? It has. Judge everything on its merits, surely. Underway for the second half here on BBC Radio London and uh, Tottenham in possession on the halfway line we're running through the lineups at an appropriate moment what a gorgeous evening in North London by the way that, as I said that that really muggy stuff that we had earlier maybe it's because I climbed five, five to steps Bradley but that, that, that felt really close earlier in the afternoon but it's, it's beautiful now as Anthony puts it out of play for a throw in for Spurs who've got Vicario in goal back for Porro Romero Van der Ven and Udoji in midfield, Basuma and Saar with Madison ahead of them. Sun on one side, Kulisevsky on the other, and Richarlison through the middle at the moment. Um, Onana is the goalkeeper for Manchester United. Back four of Wan-Bissaka, Martinez, Varane and Shaw. That is a free kick to Manchester United inside their own half of the field. Uh, Casemiro sitting in front of that back four. Anthony, Alejandro, Garnacho, Bruno Fernandes and Mason Mount supporting Marcus Rashford up front. Uh, the uh, free kick is going to be sent back by Varane to Anana and we're back underway. On the bench of Spurs, Forster, Skip, Hoiberg, Sanchez, uh, Davison Sanchez that is, uh, Emerson Royale, Perisic, Lo Celso, Solomon and Davies. And Tottenham are trying to press here and they almost force a mistake. Oh, and then Shaw treads on it, but Kulusevski can't grab the ball first. Although Spurs have won it back. And Poro plays it early down the right to Kulusevski, can't stop it going out of play uh, on the bench for Manchester United Henderson and Vitek they're both goalkeepers Lindelof Martial Eriksson Dalot Sanchez Palestri and McTominay as mentioned Michael Oliver is running the show this evening in North London and Ange Postacoglu in his opening match in his new home ground stands on the edge of his technical area as Udoji skips past three challenges and off lows to Madison 25 yards and goal tries to find Sun and there's a footing by Wan-Bissaka to take it away from him could Madison have shot Bradley oh there's a big moment terrific dribbling skill shown by Udoji centre field yeah Udoji's everywhere he's just won this challenge he found Madison he's disappointing Madison because I think he was tempted to just shift and whip the ball like we see him do time and again at Leicester he was unselfish, tried to play Son on the outside, but when Vasaka to the rescue for the Manchester United defence. Fernandez can't control this, although he's won it back though from Son and Manchester United are on the attack. He lifts this to the edge of the box, Garnacho controls it, he's got two Spurs players on him. Comes back to Shaw on that left-hand side, Manchester United tried to work it to Shaw on that side. Charleston has managed to find Madison and Son has gone charging forward Madison hesitates to release the pass he's been boxed in by wan on that left-hand side for Spurs and Madison turns and looks at Chung min Son as if to say you went in the wrong direction here comes Spurs down the right Poro wide to Kulisevsky in space into the penalty area here's the cutback it's awkward drops to Son side Madison and Son might have missed an opportunity but the ball was worked to the opposite side Kulisewski to the byline terrific composure shown by the Swede I think his right foot he crossed took a deflection off of Martinez's side but Saar arrived back post that's what you want from your midfielders gambling taking a chance and it's a terrific half volley finish left foot roof of the net to give Spurs an early breakthrough at the beginning of this second half. Oh, when Ange Postacoglu went to bed last night, Bradley, his possible last thought on if my... One well, of my he's clapping his team, yeah. and he's got a great response and reaction from the crowd as well. 
I said about Kuliseski in some good positions and a bit reluctant to cross with his right. He did exactly that. At the other end, here's my, as, uh, Rashford turns away from two defenders. It's a bit of a scramble. And Vicario gathers it. Well, game-changing moment, Bradley. It may well prove to really open this game up. Manchester United will look back at those chances for Bruno Fernandes. Here he is, centre field, feeds out to Anthony. Inside the penalty area, hits the post, bounces away. Sar collects it. Still 1 0 to Tottenham. Anthony could have struck back immediately. Just a minute and a half after Spurs went ahead. Here's Madison. Son on the left. Richarlison makes his way into the penalty area. Son cuts in field. Madison on the overlap. Oh, it's gone over everyone, the cross. Bubbled up. Sweeping move from Spurs. They're really going for it here. They sense Manchester United a bit shook by that moment that special moment for Pape Sarr just 20 years of age only his third Premier League start for Tottenham and he's rifled Spurs in front against Manchester United in the opening game of the Premier League season at White Hart Lane here's Madison 30 yards from goal wide to Sun play forward Adoji saved comes out of Trishanason no it doesn't but Charleston was inches from connecting Tottenham are battering Manchester United at the moment. Confidence coursing through the veins of the Tottenham players here. Well, we've been waiting for it, Nick. We got a glimpse of it first half. Welcome to Ansball. Yeah. No handbrake on Ansball, it would seem. His son wins a corner. If Manchester United aren't careful. Spurs will ride this wave and win the game in the next 10 minutes. Well, crucial they get a second, rode their luck, width of the post this time. Denies Manchester United a swift equaliser oh, yeah, from twinkle toes Anthony. I forgot about that. Anthony hit the post. But at the other end, Madison clapping the fans away to his right hand side. Great noise, is it there inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Fabulous atmosphere inside this ground. Tottenham lead. Madison with the corner. Raises his left arm. Right footed. Sweeps this in. It's awkward. Udoji almost got on the end of it. Garnacho puts it up into the stratosphere. Basuma tried to control it. Oh, is that going to drop to Romero? He goes down under a challenge from Lissandro Martinez. The South Stand howls for a penalty not given. Here is Madison. Skips into the box. Weaving run. And it's going to go through to Anana. There are now two Spurs players down inside the box. Madison and Romero. Anana bowls it out to Shaw. And the game continues. Long one this for uh, Fernandez to chase. It's through to Vicario. And I think they're going to have right. to stop it. Bit, and bit optimistic bit... from Vicario. Yes. He wanted to attack with nine players. He gave it to Son and said, off you go. <laughs> VAR check underway for a penalty. We've not been told this on the graphic. Here is the tangle between Martinez. I think he got Martinez. to the ball first. Oh, I don't know. That's he's a, missed the ball. He's, he's caught him. I think Martinez has caught Romero before either of them have got to the ball. Let's have a look. Well, Bradley. What about this? There's another one, isn't there? No, well, the second one isn't a foul on Madison. No, it's a good block. When Madison received the ball on the follow-up inside the box, but... I, don't know about I think the Tottenham one. coaching staff are just questioning the fourth official and they're just saying and, and, and again Nick you know this is one of them where whatever's gone on before yeah. forget it no, you've Monday got night clear. first half here yeah, you've got to clear your mind clear your mind don't judge do it on its merits don't do a zabby bird don't be cluttered with events from days ago or even minutes ago we be very zen about these things I don't think anyone's going to give anything it's going to be a drop ball inside the given. first half the referee uh, there's no graphic suggesting the check continues Michael Oliver again has been able to restart the game yeah, Steve McLaren sitting down it's gone quiet on that one Nick <laughs> right, any, any thoughts Steve anything you want to say um, still 1-0 to Tottenham in a febrile atmosphere inside the new White Hart Lane 
I looked to me for all the world as though that was a foul by Martinez on Romero. But I tell you what, Paul Coit must think it's a penalty. Penalty for you, Paul. He's penalty. Have you seen that? Oh, you've been walking up the stairs. Big shout for a penalty. Paul didn't even know it was happening. He was stuck on the stairs. He's gone to say hello to um, some of our colleagues. It's all been going on. I, I, it looked like neither of them got the ball. And Martinez trod on Romero. We're, we're not even eight minutes into this second half. Dear, oh dear. And we're going to get 15 minutes at the end of it as well. <laughs> Here's a free kick to Manchester United. He trailed by a goal to nil here on BBC Radio London. Bruno Fernandes down the right. Clips this into the box. Casemiro! Brilliant save by Vicario. That was well met by Casemiro. This header was on target. And the Spurs keeper sprang to his right and touched it over the bar. Well, we see him do that in the League Cup final last season, didn't we? Big right hand, top corner, plucks it away. Tremendous goalkeeping there from Vicario. Still 1 0. Shaw takes this short, this uh, corner, and lifted in and headed away by Romero and hacked oh, he's here in. by Sun and can Kulisewski get away from Wambasaka? Well, Kulisewski goes down, oh, touching his head. Peter really gone with top speed. Wambasaka's on a yellow as well, there Nick. He, he had half a pitch. So headed well. It's a break and count counter into. Kulisevsky and wan are on their own inside the centre circle. Oh, he's missed the ball, actually. Um, well, um, I say he's missed the ball, but he's sliced at the ball and he's only got a tiny touch on it. And he's kicked... the outside the right foot. He's kicked Kulisevsky once Kulisevsky's gone to ground. But yeah, the, the, you, you identified it straight away. Son hooked the ball towards halfway. And it was wan against Kulisevsky. And Kulisevsky got, got a lace to the ball. Not much else and then clipped Kulisevsky on his way down. We've seen that Casemiro header against a great save by Vicario. Close enough to him for him to be able to reach it, but it's a big reach with his outstretched right hand and he flicks it over the bar. It's been some game this, Bradley. We've had post bars hit, penalty yeah. appeals, terrific goal. Great saves by both goalkeepers. That from Vicario is the pick of the bunch. And uh, some controversy as well. I think I think what's <laughs> rather funny and quite amusing for us, although he has, I think there's almost been a reluctance for the referee to go to VAR. Yeah. It's a bit old-fashioned, Nick, actually. And maybe the referee's made some incorrect calls, but you know what? It's been a great watch, isn't it? Yeah, there have been loads going on. And yet, I know you've never been an advocate of it, Nick, but it's, no, well, it's, here it's, now. A, it's a throwback game, isn't and, it? And we're never getting rid of it. It's going to be forever, unfortunately. Um, but no, I was never particularly keen on it, and I can't really see that it's made a vast number of improvements. Um, football was pretty good, I thought. I rather enjoyed it. Uh, it really need, a, it need better refereeing, not, not cameras everywhere. Kulisevsky's had to come off. He'll come back on. The game has restarted. Spurs are leading. Kulisevsky's not been allowed on the field yet, and now Fernandez has broken through for a chance. Another good save by Vicario. This one towards the bottom corner wasn't the sweetest of efforts. And there was a flag up as well, I think. Yeah, he offside. Just ran a fraction early. I don't know why Kulisevsky didn't come on quicker than what he did because he tried to swiftly exploit the numerical advantage there, the visitors on that through ball he was stretching Romero but the assistant on that far right hand side had flagged you're listening to BBC Radio London Pape Sarr's first goal for Spurs separates these two sides it's 1-0 here's James Madison who is increasingly influential in this game and he wriggles away from Anthony here and crosses halfway Son ahead of him oh and Madison's ghosted past two more fantastic stuff from the signing from Leicester back to Saar 30 yards from goal wide to Porro right hand side he's going to run at Garnacho. he offloads to Kulisevsky edge of the box wants an angle and then it's driven over the top by Basuma for a goal kick for Manchester United or oh, it's the James Madison show all yeah, of a sudden the breakthrough the excellent goal from Saar I suppose they've got the real bit between their teeth I suggest Oh, that's going to be a foul uh, by Porro on Alejandro Garnacho.
Here come Manchester United down their right. Anthony, who thought he'd equalised, just after Spurs went in front. That's a good challenge by him to win it back after Sun dispossessed him. And there's an important interception by Basuma, and now Sun has space to work with down that left-hand side, running at Varane. He's cutting in field. Madison arriving to help. Sun into Madison. Back to Sun down the left edge of the penalty area. Richarlison waiting for it, headed away uh, as far as the edge of the box. And here's Basuma, ghosts into the Manchester United penalty area. Little back heel for Sun. Now Odoji, corner of the box. Bissouma, little back heel, Odoji takes over, Sun, is he going to get a shot away? Still going Sun, shoots it, blocked by Shaw, and it goes behind. The Spurs fans were baying for someone to let fly, just no way through. Manchester United are there to be knocked out, Nick. They are there to be knocked over here. Spurs mustn't waste these chances. Some intricate football in such tight area there, inside that penalty box. It's a great block in the end, I suppose, from Luke Shaw. How that hasn't at least hit the target, I do not know. Corner to Tottenham, Madison takes it, raises both arms above his head, steps back in front of that south stand. Here's the delivery, whipped in towards Romero, headed away by Casimiro, who had that chance for Manchester United. They have had a number of opportunities, uh, have Manchester United, during the course of this game. But they've all stayed out so far. Here's Son coming forward again. And now Bissouma opens up for him, then he gets closed down. As he thinks about shooting, Saar the goal scorer. Wide to Kulisevsky on the right-hand side. Running at Shaw, gets held up, back to Porro. Spurs are pushing Manchester United right back onto the edge of their own penalty area. This is Madison on the left, low cross, cleared, only half cleared really by Casemiro. Here's Kulisevsky, sent it down the right, Porro trying to get hold of it, Shaw has seen that out. Goal kick for Anana to take. We're 17 minutes into the second half, it's 1-0 to Tottenham. Manchester United have not lost at this stadium, they've got a very good record here, but they're trailing at the moment with just under half an hour to go. Spurs' only well, he, victory in their last nine he, league games. He cut such a away, six, composed figure, didn't he? The Spurs manager, and Poscatoglu on the, on the touchline. Odoji shown a yellow card for Bakchak. Yeah, I'm not sure. Decision went against him. He spoke to Michael Anthony Oliver. he ran after the ball and pushed the full back in the back there. It was a bump. It's a challenge from behind, no more than that. But do you think it was for arguing? The actual yellow card? Yeah. Because he, he snapped back, didn't he? Michael Oliver having none of it. Well, not having none of it, having some of it, but not all of it. If you follow me. Madison on halfway. Some the target. Sprints away down the left. Can he keep it in play? Yes, he can. Richarlison in the box. Saar as well. Here's Madison on the edge of the penalty area. Gets held up. Back to Sun. Keeps it alive. Basuma takes over. Basuma drags onto his right foot, then his left. Still going. Maisy run. Low shot, just wide. Well, they're, they're still creaking. Manchester well, they're lining United. up, aren't they? Every attack, every every ball that goes into Manison, the re, the release attacking pass is setting Spurs on their way. And these opportunities are mounting up. And Christian Eriksen is being called for by Eric Ten Hag. In fact, a number of changes are being readied for Manchester United, including Diogo Dalot, who is going to be introduced, presumably to help stem this tide. And it is a tide at the moment, but it's only 1-0. Kulisevsky, right-hand side, wants to release Porro. Times the run, Porro with Shaw. Shaw does just enough, only just enough, mind you. Garnacho is going to take over. Brilliant snap into him by Saar. Stops the counter-attack in its track. that Spurs Saar ranging across the middle of the field just making sure Garnacho got absolutely nowhere and Manchester United are getting ready to make these two changes Eriksen and Dalot to come on oh that's Adoji having his pocket picked here's Anthony rare attack this for Manchester United at this stage of the game little step over runs into Van de Ven who gives him no quarter takes it away from him Adoji runs it clear here's Richarlison wins a throw is that triple change, as you mentioned, Nick? It's a triple change, yeah, we've got another one. Jaden Sancho's coming on as well. So the first one off 
It's going to be Anthony, I think. Oh, Garnacho is the first one to be replaced for Ericsson, who had seven wonderful years here. And Anthony has come off as well. Uh, coming on to replace Anthony is Sancho. And coming on to... For, uh, to uh, Dalot's come on. wan on the far won, side. On that yellow card, been withdrawn. Not surprised there, because Spurs had a good number of attacking moves and positive attacking moves in this second half down that uh, left flank with Son and Madison. Well played, Richarlison borrows away. Finds him on the right-hand side. Here comes Spurs again. Manchester United still adjusting to the changes. Porros crosses deflects that's gone behind surely oh that looked like a corner to me but Anana grabbed it and the assistant referee said play on we are nearly halfway through the second half here on BBC Radio London it is Tottenham 1 Manchester United 0 well of Manchester United 66 minutes in just weathered that Spurs onslaught yeah could be a critical period of the game Tottenham have won this back with Romero Manchester United have now made the changes oh well played Saar brilliant accelerating away from Ericsson finds Son down the left Udoji makes his way into the box Son waits finds Udoji inside the penalty area on the edge he's got Baran for company oh and the back heel actually doesn't really work it hits Dalot and then it's headed by, out of play by Fernandes much to the delight of the home supporters for a throw into Tottenham deep inside Manchester United territory It'll be a throw-in for Adoji to take. I know we've got a long way to go, Bradley, but this would be a priceless first victory. Huge win. In, in, in so many ways. If they can hang on or extend their lead or whatever, whatever we're talking about after 90 minutes or however many minutes it is, the opportunity here for Tottenham is massive. It's going to be a throw-in on the far side. And the performance of the likes of... Well, Saar in particular, but Porro as well on this near side. Very encouraging. A, a marker, so to speak. Well, absolutely. Almost to suggest, you know, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I see what you're trying to do here. A statement. Kulisevsky into the box. Richarlison can't get on the end of it. He's almost collided with the post as he flung himself. Full stretch. But he just couldn't reach it. And Anana grabbed it. Work it. Here come Manchester United on their right, still kind of in third gear after the battering they've taken from Tottenham in the last 10-15 minutes or so. Here's Fernandez on the right, sends it straight to Doji. Bruno Fernandez, not a happy bunny. Ivan Perisic is going to come on, as is Ben Davies for Spurs. So Ant Postacoglu is shuffling his pack after Manchester United made their alterations. Perisic for Odoji, possibly, you yeah. thought. He's on a yellow now, isn't he? He is, Maybe yeah. Ben Davis on that side. Maybe going to a five, I don't know. Um, it's not... Well, we'll see. We'll see what Mr Postacoglu has lined up for us to try and defend this lead against Manchester United. Casemiro, left side, looks up. Gives it to Sancho, who runs into Porro. Out of play off Sancho for a Spurs throw. Yeah. Tottenham can make the double change. Yeah, Doji's coming off now for Perisic. Substitution for Spurs. And he's going to get a warm round of applause. Oh, ben, sorry, beg your pardon. ben Davies coming on for... That suggests maybe Perisic will be played by her up the pitch. I don't know. And Richarlison's coming off to be replaced by Perisic. Number nine, Richarlison. Number 14, Ivan Perisic. Now, well, you said Nick, Kim Min Son, the Tottenham captain, Son through the middle, yeah, maybe down through the middle. Well, I'd be very interested to see what this is like. He's Richard worked hard, Richarlison. Yeah, he gets a pat on the back from his manager. He's he disappointed. Doesn't, he doesn't look happy. Upon 70 minutes, nearly that he's uh, been taken off. I think, and I've liked the way that he took the ball in under pressure. First touch, set, keep possession done that quite well tonight no he's not happy at all uh, Richarlison being taken off and he's sitting on the bench and he's letting everyone round him know telling Emerson Royale in no uncertain terms 
uh, that he's a little bit disappointed about being replaced. Looks as though Spurs will continue. Well, the sun's through the middle, no question. Is Paris is playing in the sun roll? Yeah, he is, off that left-hand side. So it's still a four. Banana clears. This is collected by Bissouma. Pape Sarr. Here's Ben Davies on that left-hand side. Uses Eric's, uh, to Ericsson. Madison, honestly. <laughs> I'm seven years out of date, Bradley. Calling Madison Ericsson. Here's Porro. Down the right. Ericsson is on. Playing for Manchester United, of course. That's the best pass by Kulisevsky. Allows Sancho to make progress down that flank. Spins away from Porro and he's off. Jaden Sancho, he needs some help from Basuma. Basuma's put it out for a throw. Terrific from Basuma. Vacated the centre field position and backed his teammate up after a rather cheap Kulaseski turnover there. Shaw's throw finds Christian Eriksen down that uh, left hand side, plays it square. Got to keep Varan. Getting Madison on the ball. Yeah, absolutely. All Nick, of a sudden, haven't they, Tottenham? All of a sudden, wants the ball all it, the time. It's the game. I think for him because he he adds that creativity to this Tottenham side this season and he's played in uh, confident fashion tonight like the man on the ball did for many years yeah Christian Eriksen very, very, you can see why I might get the two of them muddled up because he's a player that Spurs have lacked Eriksen sends this into the Spurs box headed away by Davies Perisic launches this one for Sun to chase. Anana is so far off his line. Just brings it down as though he's out for a stroll. And Manchester United starts again. Eriksen drives it forward. It's switched out to that far side of the field. And Dalot. It's going to be easy for Kulisevsky to collect that rather aimless ball forward for Manchester United. And Kulisevsky just hurtles down the flank. He's got Sancho with him. Sancho gets a good foot in and then Saar just steers it out to stop Sancho breaking away down yeah, that flank. That's going to be very important. If there is a turnover, you know, Spurs' discipline on those transition moments. Certainly Saar and Pesuma, they've got to cover a lot of ground. Perisic is going to have to help out in that regard. Oh, he oh, slips. And Ericsson has almost given this to Madison oh, and he's put behind so by the man. so lucky. Wow, Chris and Ericsson complaining about the pitch and the surface. That would be a changing of the guard. If Ericsson slipped, allowed Madison to score his first goal for Spurs. That, that could have easily have broke to Madison and then he would have had a simple shot 15 yards out from goal. That man's going to... Great ovation and noise from the Tottenham fans. They've been impressed by his display and debut tonight. Madison will right-footed swing this out. Perisic forward. Sun at the edge of the box. Ben Davies um, in the six-yard box. This is flicked on towards the far post, but not away. Collected by some by the corner flag. Ericsson with him. Two former colleagues, of course. Reached the Champions League final. Porro. Given to... Bissouma back to Porro as the last man back and he's going to clip it out wide to Perisic on that left hand side Black stays down Spurs on the attack Perisic moves away from Dalot very easily edge of the penalty area to Madison who gets closed down by Casemiro wants to try and seek out Porro Madison twists back for Perisic left hand side here's the delivery looking for Kulisevsky can't connect Rashford back doing some defensive work to launch a counter attack for Manchester United again Saar straight in United throw. They let, they're enjoying Pape Sarr, aren't they? What are you reminding me of there, Nick? Sometimes here's a chance for Manchester United through to Vicario. Those Gorka. wonderful days at White Hart Lane when a, a Scott Parker went sprinting a con yeah. across the pitch, <laughs> slid in and make the challenge, and the uh, the fabulous noise absolutely no inside know that wonderful stadium. I know exactly what we're you up, mean. weren't they? That's what he's done a couple of times, Sar. Pierre Emile Hoiberg is coming on for Pape Sar. And I don't think this is just for the goal, this evasion, Bradley. No. He's been brilliant. In a word, energy. Yep. That's what Sar has brought. 
in an abundance as this game has gone on. Great applause for him. Well done, young man. Fine goal. Well, I would be surprised if he doesn't start at Bournemouth next Saturday lunchtime, Bradley. And he has a word with Ange Postacoglu, who mutters in his ear. Lots of high fives on the bench. He scored the only goal of the game. He's made some very, very important interventions. And Manchester United plod forward with 15 minutes to go. They trail 1-0. They've not looked terribly threatening since Anthony saw his effort come back off the post. Dalot has it, right side. Ben Davis comes out to deal with him. Dalot still going. Fernandez outside him. Skips in field, sends in a cross that looks uh, for Mount. It's only half cleared as far as Shaw. Comes out to Mount on that left hand side, back into Shaw again. Whose cross eludes Fernandez and chested back by Perisic into the arms of Vicaria. Yeah, good info from Basuma as well. Experience, chest touch back to the goalkeeper there from Perisic to substitute. And Spurs can then build and get out into their positions and shape. Romero clips this forward. Son can't hold it up. Kulisevsky and Sancho combine. That's been sent back to Shaw into the feet of Eriksson. Manchester United starting to have a little bit more possession in the middle of the field, but they've not looked terribly threatened. Well, they'll bring that experienced Christian Eriksson. He'll bring some order, some composure, won't he, to uh, United's play here. And they're just ever so slightly building some momentum themselves Rashford down the left wants to take on Porro and Porro's got the better of him Rashford couldn't get round him Kulisevsky puts that out of play off Rashford for a Tottenham throw really important spell I suspect here Nick in this game it's going to determine that final score into the 90 plus minutes and who may end up winning, drawing or possibly losing this game yeah critical passage, Spurs leading 1-0 this is BBC Radio London it's Nick Godwin and Bradley Allen with you and Spurs have possession they've won it on the halfway line and Son accelerates well forward, finds Perisic left hand side, not much in the box at the moment, Perisic's cross hits Dalot and is blocked, comes out to Davies though Spurs very good at recycling the ball on occasions like this here's Madison Wide to Sun again on that left-hand side. Goes back to halfway. And Van der Ven. Here's Bissouma. has got two Manchester United players around him, but you wouldn't have thought it. The way he went about things. Gets it off to Hoiberg. And now Porro. Van der Ven. Madison on that left-hand side. Back to Van der Ven once again. 12 minutes to go. Spurs 1. Manchester United nil here on the home of London football with the Women's World Cup final tomorrow morning at 5 to 11 and then West Ham against Chelsea at 4.30 our coverage on digital radio starts at 4 then we're live at Selhurst Park on Monday from 6 what a few days of football we've got for you here's Kulisevsky on the right can't make progress combines with Hoiberg Sancho tries to hold them up the Dane uses Bissouma Kulisewski back to Hoiberg Spurs looking composed Madison turns and finds some with his back to goal lovely football now Davies joins in left hand side he's run into an awful lot of space Ben Davies finds Kulisewski tight angle can't get the cross in or the shot Anana raced off his line but Tottenham was zinging that around yeah it just opened up from left full back inside he sort of took the pass from Madison Ben Davies and he might have shot himself from the edge of the box Tried to thread it through to Kulisewski, just fraction over hit and out for a goal kick. Ten minutes to go. Sancho running back into his own half, once again pursued by Pedro Porro. Feeds it in field. This is Varane who scored the winner against Wolves. Crosses halfway. Neither of these two sides have seen an attacking player. I mean, if you count Sara's attacking player, which debatable I suppose here's Mount down the right for Manchester United tries to twist away from Van der Ven gets a cross in he eludes everyone except Kulisevsky and then the shot into the ground and then into the arms of Vicario comes in from Casemiro 
couldn't really generate the power he would have wanted. Yeah, I think he was headed out from Porro and he was supporting the play. The experienced Casemiro hit the shot down into the turf. It sort of took the pace and the speed out of the shot and Vicario was behind it. Porro inside his own half on that left touchline. Plays it back into his own penalty area and Pierre-Emile Hoiberg sends it back to Vicario who right-footed gives this plenty of air over the halfway line the target is Sonny won't win it Basuma can't get hold of it either and Rashford has collected the ball high up the pitch and Manchester United have bodies forward one of them is Ericsson 25 yards from goal goes wide to Dalot he's got Casemiro in the penalty area Fernandez has it on that right side back into Ericsson now Varane thinks about breaking forward gets held up Lissandro Martinez lifts the ball into the box and that goes nowhere near another red shirt. And Bruno Fernandes is barking frustration at his centre-half for that delivery. Maybe yeah. a, maybe Yonana should have delivered see, the pass. See the idea. Perhaps a little bit of uh, lack of quality from Manchester United's perspective, but, you know, they're going to they're gonna push further up the pitch. They're going to commit more men on the press, aren't they? When Spurs are in these situations and playing out themselves... And I think if Spurs can play through round or over that with quality, Tottenham are going to have counter-attack moments in these closing minutes to uh, secure this game with an opportunity and possibly a second goal. More. Another change, another striker, yeah. Martial. Yeah, and I think we're going to see an, a second change as well. I don't think this is just going to be Martial on his own, but he is definitely coming on. There's more activity on that Manchester United bench. I think that's Palestri who's being readied on the touchline so Manchester United with more changes to make here's Sun centre of the field Madison lovely pass out wide to the left to seek out Perisic two in the box here one of them is Davis oh he's tucked it in Ben Davis extends Tottenham's lead and maybe puts the result beyond doubt it wasn't the cleanest of contacts it was helped towards goal from that left hand side and I think the last touch was from Davis he swung a foot out Martinez last either way Tottenham lead by two goals to nil and it is Lissandro Martinez who puts through his own net Davies didn't touch it the Manchester United defender did Tottenham two Manchester United nil well what a start for Ange Poscoglu what noise inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium there's a vibrancy they've played with real endeavour energy Tottenham this second half especially and they deserve that it was an own goal and you'd think barring a miracle here it's going to be three Premier League points the first of the season for Tottenham Hotspur fantastic well Facundo Palestri and Anthony Martial are being sent on here <laughs> with a, a situation that's gone from difficult to almost impossible Mason Mount's coming off in the first instance Substitution yeah, Tottenham two, Manchester United nil. Mount coming off for Palestri. Wearing uh, number 28. And Marcus Rashford, who looks a real yeah. threat in the first half, has disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Comes surprisingly, off. he's been removed. But all this for the Spurs fans is secondary. Because thanks to Pape Sar's opener and an own goal from Martinez, Spurs lead 2 0 at the new White Hart Lane. And who knows, maybe they could compound the misery before full time. Manchester United look a little bit shell shocked, I have to say. After a game that was close for long periods, don't forget, Manchester United could well have equalised moments after going. 1-0 down as Porro almost bursts through. Varane stops him. Eriksen rolls it forward. Here's Martial. Casemiro challenged by Romero. 
comes out to Palestri on the flank. He goes down under a challenge from Perisic. The referee, I think, has played advantage here. And here is Fernandez, whose effort is blocked. Kulisevsky tries to get it clear, doesn't work. Tottenham with everyone behind the ball. You can hear the noise inside this ground now. Richard Shaw and now Bruno Fernandes again. He floats in the box. Palestri makes a run, but Vicario yeah. gets there first. Took it well to the pitch of the ball. Wasn't quite aware of Palestri, but he was brave and secure in his handling. And you know what these Tottenham fans have enjoyed? It's evident, Nick, and us as well. Let's go for it attitude. Buccaneering spirit. Yeah. Football you know? fans up and down the country, they just love that. Here's Son through the middle. Oh, he's giving it away. Casemiro driving Manchester United forward again to try and set up a big finish. Dalot down the right. Goes past Davies. Davies gets the block and it floats awkwardly. Well, it stayed in, in fact. Uh, um, comes out to this left-hand side and Sancho. Now Luke Shaw swings in across, headed away by Bissouma. Comes out to Dalla on the right, into Baran. Here's Lissandro Martinez. Baran again, wide to Palastri on the right-hand side. Manchester United desperate for a foothold. We've got three and a half minutes of the 90 to go. More changes for Spurs. Emerson Royale. Manor Solomon's going to make first Tottenham appearance as Pelestri bursts into the box. Oh, that might be a penalty. Well, it goes, he went down under a challenge, but I think the ball might have gone. Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, he's checking advice. it. I think he's going to check this. Now, has the, has the challenge been made? Oh, I think Ben Davies trips over himself and takes Pelestri down. Had the ball gone? I wonder whether the ball is tough call that Nick, wasn't away. it? Not easy, not straightforward. Just waiting. I think we're going to have to make these Subsidies changes Spurs. while they wait. Yep. Uh, Manuel Solomon Subsidies is going to make a first Spurs appearance, and he's going to replace Kulusevski, 24-year-old Israeli signed from Shakhtar Donetsk in the summer. Was on loan at Fulham last season. First competitive appearance in a Spurs shirt. Emerson Royale. He's going to come on for Pedro Porro, who I thought played very well, Bradley. Yeah, he's been steady. Got up and down the wing, defended with resilience. Emerson Royale to uh, help Spurs with Solomon and the other subs. Close this game one out. No penalty against uh, Ben Davies after the VAR check game back underway Spurs have made their alterations Shaw sends this in field here's Romero just inside his own penalty area wide to Solomon his first touch is to run at Luke Shaw and he's held the ball up well and found Roy Emerson Royale who's dispossessed Sancho burrowing forward for Manchester United given to Fernandez, who's cut out uh, it was Perisic who made the challenge yeah for the first time See, Nan Posca's got to do just a tad frustrated there with that cheap turnover from, uh, oh, well played Solomon. So, and then Shaw has held him back. The referee's waved advantage. Here come Tottenham. Bissouma on the right-hand side. They enjoyed that. Oh, and then Bissouma's given it away. And Manchester United can come forward. Although they have given it away. Hoiberg steps in, runs at Ericsson, given to Madison. Perisic is wide on the right if he can find him. Tottenham on the attack in the last minute of the 90. They lead 2-0. Madison pops up inside the penalty area at an angle. Oh, he's not really got a white shirt to aim at. Solomon was the only one there. And Casemiro will clear. Spurs desperate to win the ball back. They love a third just to put the cherry on the cake. But Manchester United are moving over the halfway line now with their former midfielder, Christian Eriksen. He's got... Palestri to his right, here come the away side, Palestri on the edge of the box, runs out of road, uses Dallant behind him, into Bruno Fernandes, who lifts this into the box, Casemiro's header is straight at Macario, who gathers it, very, very comfortable, I was going to say, I was going to say, answer. the one thing I haven't detected amongst this Spurs team, is any fear at all today, not at the beginning, not against Manchester United, not with the enormity of the occasion, never entered the lexicon. And I think he's he, he's brought that 
already in the short term in his arrival at the club. He, he, he said that in no uncertain terms to the players. He, he, it's not going to be on not trying, not pushing forward, not getting after the ball, not playing with an intensity. The Tottenham players across pre-season have, uh, have trained very, very hard. Perhaps they're still a little bit short in terms of actual games themselves. But boy, have they improved, I would say, probably 15 minutes onwards in this game. And they've finished with terrific strength. And we've got nine injury minutes as well, Nick. We do, yeah. The referee is going to add on nine minutes. Spurs lead 2-0. Manchester United still probing, still trying to get a foothold. They have had chances in this game. Vicario and the posts have intervened. Palestri wide to Dalot, skips away well from Davies. Stands up across, it's headed away by Basuma as far as Eriksson. Here's Lisandro Martinez who had the final touch for the goal. Into Fernandez who curls this down the throat of Vicario. Well, but too easy really I mean since that brilliant springing save by Vicario well, everything else has been tame there's been key moments the handball against Romero probably a United penalty kick both sides hitting the woodwork I think the Anthony effort at 1-0 one, one, one for Tottenham lovely turn from Hoiberg yeah that was the key moment yeah I think so stayed out and then Spurs were able to have that really dominant period. I think what the Tottenham manager would love as well and the fans is a clean sheet here, Nick. That oh, would that be would, yeah. uh, the cherry on the cake, wouldn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, it would be perfect. Make it a perfect first home game for Ange Postacoglu. Here's Emerson Royale over the halfway line. Madison makes a dash forward if oh, Royale spots him. He, he hasn't. And Solomon has it on the right-hand side. Bradley was urging Emerson Royale to make that pass. Goes back to Basuma though. Still got seven minutes to go. Comes back to Hoiberg. Van der Ven has it inside his own half of the field. The Spurs fans are really enjoying themselves now. Hoiberg sweeps it wide to Solomon. Wants to take on Luke Shaw. He's had a little battle with him already once or twice. Comes in field, uses Hoiberg. Has not done Basuma any favours there, but Basuma's got himself out of trouble. And here's Ben Davies coming forward for Tottenham, who lead 2 0. Perisic, left hand side, sun in the box. Here's Madison. Madison wants to shoot. It's blocked by Ericsson. Bullet on the volley from Davies is blocked as well. Well, that could have gone anywhere. Solomon scampers into the Tottenham box once again. He's got Casemiro for company towards the touch. That's not a bad cross. It almost falls to Madison, then it's lifted back into the danger zone by Davies and gathered by Anana. Got six minutes left. All this injury time really does kind of distort the way the game is almost being managed because the normal course of events would be in the fourth minute of stoppage time unless yeah. something remarkable had happened. Everyone would just be kind of winding down. Well, that's where the fitness levels and certainly the, the substitutes that are introduced and come on still have a significant part to play in any uh, Premier League football match. Davies in strongly with Dalot goes out for a Manchester United throw I mean goals do change games if Manchester United were to fashion something late on you never know but at the moment Spurs seem to have this excruciatingly assembled expensive say that again excruciatingly expensively assembled Manchester United team under control they've all cost gazillions these Manchester United players Here's Varane, but at the moment... But it's that old adage, that. Nick. Does it fit? Do they come together? Can the manager get the very best out of them and uh, enable any given team to win football matches? Varane costs 34 million. Martinez costs 48 million. Sancho cost 73 million. Here's the cross. Palastri can't get hold of it. He actually Solid came through Davis. the ranks. He, he cost nothing just to finish that. Palastri okay. came through the ranks in the, in the interest of balance. It's going to be a goal kick which Vicario is going to take. They've just not, just not create, you know, created much, Bradley, really. 
And I said that Anthony effort off the post and then the Casemiro header saved by Vicario. Since then, it's been quite ordinary from Eric Ten Hag's side. Spurs have it inside their own half of the field. We've now played for five minutes of the nine, so four more to go. It's Tottenham 2, Manchester United 0. And Christian Romero, who, if you remember in the first half, did seem to stick his hand out inside the box. This goes back to Vicario under a little bit of pressure. Clears downfield. Target, well, his son, but Varane gets there first. And then Shaw finds Sancho. That was one of the big talking points of the first half, but it was still nil-nil. Shaw takes it past Bissouma and races forward to the edge of the box. Offloads to Martial, has a sight of goal, lifts it over the top. This takes a deflection into corner. Manchester United sixth corner yeah. of the game. Casemiro was at Cas your pardon, Casemiro. Was that Perisic or Ben Davis even that come across? Not too many of the uh, London-based Manchester United travelling supporters left right. inside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They look rather disgruntled on what their side have offered in this second half in this game. Here's the corner. It's not cleared. Headed away by Solomon. And Sun hacks it clear. They brought everyone back, Spurs. They want this clean sheet. No question. Here's Ericsson's delivery and headed over. Oh, flicked over again. The flag was up, wouldn't have counted. Sensational save by Vicario. Yeah. Varane's header, point blank range. Brilliant reflexes from the new Tottenham goalkeeper. Well, he'll gain a lot of confidence from some of the key moments as he's been involved. New I mean, UK that's Vicario. It. That is in. And it's how on Pratt earth? Varane has headed it at a height for the six foot plus Tottenham goalie to get a hand on it and maybe it should have been down into the corner but still a fine save seven minutes of stoppage time played two more to go Tottenham 2 Manchester United nil here on BBC Radio London the Women's World Cup final England Spain live on the home of London football from 5 to 11 tomorrow West Ham against Chelsea, a London derby with real teeth. Pochettino against Moyes. Our coverage on digital radio starts at four. And then from six on Monday at Sellers Park, Aaron Paul has all the fun of the fair with Crystal Palace against Arsenal. Here's Palestri. Spurs have given it away. Oh, and then they won it back. Bissouma's... Oh, no, it's a foul. Bissouma on Palestri just outside the D. Well, he scampered around the young and he since he's come on bit sloppy from Heiberg played the ball backwards unnecessary there was a forward option on they drove towards the heart of the Tottenham defence and as Basuma worked hard to recover late on in this one he's bumped the full back and this is in uh, excellent territory isn't it for Bruno Fernandes that clean sheet still an objective for Tottenham but Fernandes is lining this up it's fractionally to the left We've almost played the nine minutes. Spurs are going to win this game, you would have thought. But are they going to get that clean sheet? Fernandez steps away. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven man wall, and he's lifted it over the top. Absolutely delighted roar as it sails over the top Vicario is punching the air already he's very happy with his evening's work and he, so he should be the clock ticks up to 99 minutes on the big screen away to our right I think we're done win uh, Nick Michael Oliver's going to blow a fine win Vicario asking for more a claim for these Tottenham players tonight he's brilliant well he's, done he's conducting the crowd Manchester United of all teams. Pape Sarr with the first goal. An own goal from Lissandro Martinez extending the advantage. It is Sarr who will get the headlines because he was brought into the side today by Ant Postacoglu and he's finished a rasping volley with his left foot from Kulisevsky's cross. Martinez with the own goal that sealed the victory. But what a moment. What a
a special result for Spurs this is. What a big result for Ange Postacoglu, who, in the way, that kind of avuncular way he does, just kind of mooches onto the field, arms thrust deep in his pockets. He must be feeling it though, Bradley. What a way to open your accounts at home. We said it at the start of the game. It doesn't matter when you play Manchester United at home. It's one of the key fixtures of the season if you're going to be successful. Spurs have passed this first real test. And I think what he's managed to do, and we're only just starting out here, because this is a rebuild and this is going to take time, is you have a manager in his measured words, Nick. He's telling these players, I do know how to win. If you believe me, we might be able to go somewhere. That was a brilliant second half performance. Madison, I think, was class. He was the fulcrum of that. Tottenham had wonderful energy. It might have been different on key decisions that might have gone in the favour of the visitors. Having said that, I think for Tottenham's efforts, they were worthy winners tonight. And it's a brilliant home debut for Ange, Poskokoglu's side, and the players, and the fans. Three precious Premier League points. Goodness gracious me, the goals then, as I said, from Pape Sar on the own goal uh, from Lissandro Martinez. Loads happened. Spurs hit the bar in the post in the first half. Manchester United thought they should have had a penalty when it struck Romero's arm. Anthony hit the post just moments, moments after Tottenham had taken the lead. But in the end, it is Spurs who emerge victorious. Manchester United's first ever defeat on this ground. And Ange's ball is off to a winning start at home. These Spurs fans are going to wander off down the Tottenham High Road, loving every single minute of this. Ange's ball rolls down to Bournemouth on Saturday lunchtime. Goodness only knows how that will go. Uh, but remarkably, here in this first home game for the new Spurs, the post-Harry Kane Spurs, it's a kind of a Harry Kane scoreline, I have to tell you. It's finished Tottenham 2, Manchester United 0. The Spurs players are celebrating hard with the South Stand. You can't blame them. Don't forget, tomorrow the World Cup final at 5 to 11. And West Ham against Chelsea uh, from 4 o'clock. And then it's Sellers Park live with Aaron Paul. Monday evening from 6. Crystal Palace against Arsenal. That'll be both. They're all going to be decent. All three of them. Absolute crackers. And they're, they're only, you can only hear those three games, I think, live here on the home of London football. Just remember that. Here's Gary Crowley. Good night from Bradley and me at Spurs.